down at our local uh, hardware store, which um, rhymes with runnings, um, from time to time they have this particular brand of like garden solar light, um, so just an LED uh, shining during the night and um, obviously based on the sorts of chips that we've seen before here. So um, just a little uh, solar panel at the top and uh, we unscrew this. So what I probably like about these, well a couple of things I like about these, uh, one is that it's got this frosted, quite a large uh, container and it's frosted, so it's actually quite nice. Uh, it comes with uh, the spikes so you can put into a garden or into a, a lawn or wherever you like it. Um, but what I really like about it is that the electronics here are easy to get at and you can easily modify them. So one of my, well, there's a couple of common things that I do with them. One is Christmas lights where I just modify it and I put in these flickering red and green sort of festive lights. But I also like this really quite a weird thing that I do with it where I uh, put a um, microcontroller in there and uh, pull out most, well, pretty much all of the electronics and I just have it flashing on and off uh, through the night. So it's, it's quite a weird effect. I use these ice blue LEDs, which I think are quite pleasant, probably drive a lot of other people crazy. Um, so I thought, I thought it was just, we'd just modify this one. And, uh, and we'll do that. So I've got a little bag of tricks here, which we'll, uh, which we'll go into. Um, so let's, uh, let's pull it apart and start with and see what's in there. And then we'll, uh, we'll work on uh, changing it up. So let's just get that out. So take the screws out. We'll replace those later on. And because it's screwed into plastic, they're actually quite difficult to get out. All right, so I'll leave those to the side. And then inside here, you've got an on-off switch here, which um, you know we'll get rid of. Got a very small uh, battery. Um, I was talking about, you know, what are the two things I like about this. One is that it's easy, accessible, and I like the container and that sort of stuff. But the other thing is um, that from time to time, um, they are available for just $1. So usually they're about $2 each, sometimes they're $1.50, but from time to time, and I don't know why, you go into the shop and they're a dollar each and I might buy 10 or 20 of them um, because it's just pretty good value. So you get the electronics, you get the solar panel, you get the housing and everything like that. You get the LED and you get this uh, pretty awful battery, which um, I will uh, throw away pretty much straight away. Um, and then I'll, I'll put in a, another uh, AAA or perhaps even we might actually get rid of this whole thing and put in a double A battery in there to squeeze that in there as well. So um, let's uh, pull everything out and uh, and replace it. Nah, don't really throw away the, uh, the battery. Uh, this is a bit of an interlude here because I'm actually going to program up the A-Tiny 13 so you can see that process as well. And uh, I did narrate this when I did the screen capture and then for some reason lost the sound so I'm uh, I'm going to go over it now while I'm watching it with you so hopefully I'll be able to uh, to spot uh, what I did along the way I think the first thing I did was burn the fuses so uh, we've got the uh, Arduino IDE which you know you can use so I'm just checking the settings here uh, that we've got uh, for the A tiny 13 I'm going to disable the uh, brownout detector, which I'm going to. I do encode anyway later on, uh, and then we're um, we're just checking to make sure that the other options are correct, particularly the 128 kilohertz. So it's very slow, and in order to do that, um, I need to use the slow guy um, USB ASP, and just checking the other options and finally burning it so that is the uh, the fuses burnt so now I'm going to use uh, AVR Dude S and uh, it's a new installation so I guess the first thing I have to do is to set up the USB ASP as the device that we're connecting to the chip with so I select that and then I'm looking at uh, the serial connection, a uh, slow rate to talk to this thing. 
because it is just chugging along with those fuses burnt now at 128 kilohertz. Likewise for the transfer. And then I'm actually going to just detect it and see if it picks it up. It's always a nice to do that. And yep, it shows that it's an A-Tiny 13, which is good. I'm going to read the fuses as well. Uh, this is a nice part of AVR Dudes because uh, it tells you what the fuses are, but you can actually click on the link there and it will take you to the uh, to the website um, with those options. So this is embedded and it shows that it's an ATiny 13 and uh, it shows that it's running at 128 kilohertz uh, and uh, down the bottom there it actually mirrors the fuses that we we just set and of course if you change this so um, I'm going to change it to a slightly faster speed and then we'll have a look at what that does to those fuses so there it is changed from 7b to 7.5 and so on so a very handy website for um, setting and checking fuses uh, and we can actually write that as well. So uh, you don't need to use the ID. So there's those fuses that have been written again using AVR Dudes. Uh, either, either or really. And uh, of course there are other ways of doing it as well. So the next thing that we need to do is to actually uh, go and grab the code. Uh, and the um, I'm going to use uh, AVR Sim here to do the code. Uh, this is Gerhardt's simulator. And uh, it's worth going through the code just uh, quickly just to uh, remind us of what we're doing. We've seen some of this stuff before. Um, basically, there's the ISR, the interrupt service routine, called My Time ISR, um, which, um, which does nothing, uh, which is pretty usual. Uh, you could set a flag there, of course, or do whatever you wanted to do. Uh, then we're just going to set up uh, with PB4 to be output, and then we write all the pins uh, to one so that they they are be they become uh, input and pull ups. Uh, so that's what uh, that's what that's basically uh, set similar to what you'd see in setup. Then uh, the loop just waits a bit, and, and in this case the bit is one eighth of a second, and then uh, waits a lot uh, by comparison. And this is a two second wait. Uh, and then your wait a bit uh, has the uh, flag set for the um, the watchdog timer uh, and uh, to go to see what that is we'll go to the um, data sheet so this is the watchdog timer control register we set WDTIE to be one so that that timer is actually enabled and then there's WDP three two one and zero which in the data sheet uh, will uh, depending on what values you have, uh, we'll set the, the actual delay for that watchdog. So we're looking at uh, the first, the last two bits to be set to uh, 1, 1 for uh, an eighth of a second and uh, to be set for 1, 1, 1, the last three bits for um, two seconds. So, yeah, very quick to, uh, to change those. So um, there's the wait a bit at 1, 1 and the wait a lot at uh, triple 1. Then we have our sleep routine, and again we've seen this uh, before. Things have to be done in a certain order there for the brownout detector to be turned off. Uh, then it just sleeps, and that's fine. And the last thing is that that uh, that PB4 is flipped, so the light comes on and then the light goes off, uh, depending on where you are in the cycle. And that's it. So we assemble that, and we are good to go. And then we'll go back to AVR Dudes in order to run that code so uh, sorry to load up that code so we'll just go and find that now this file is actually uh, misnamed i think at um, 0 0.25 and 4 seconds for another project but anyway we'll just go ahead with that it is actually an eighth of a second on and two seconds off and then we just program it and uh, there it is it's gone through the slow guy and all is good so the next thing now to do is to just check to see if that is working before we actually load it up onto our PCB. Okay, so this is just uh, testing to see that the code works. So at the back there, I've got my USB uh, ASP 
Uh, so that's uh, out from Serial. And uh, then that goes, uh, well, that, that actual program has been configured so that it can both burn the fuses and also talk to very slow ATINY 13s, in this case 128 kilohertz. And I've actually labeled the cable there um, so that I know that that is a slow programmer. And then that comes into the little programming adapter, which we've seen on a previous blog and video. And, uh, and finally into an adapter so I can just put that SOP uh, chip in there right at the top there, uh, which will then go into the solar uh, panel. Let's see if I can just focus on that a little bit. That's better. Uh, and that will go into the PCB, which attaches to the solar line. And then uh, just between PB4 and ground is a 5mm uh, red LED just flashing away. It uh, goes on for an eighth of a second and off for two seconds and the thing sleeping the rest of the time. So, yep, that's working fine. Let's go and uh, put that into the solar panel. All right, so I've put a little bit apart now. Um, so, yeah, the, the battery uh, housing for this is quite small because it's for AAA. I'm going to probably clip all of this off and uh, try and replace it with a AA and, of course, a lot bigger size. This one is nominally uh, 200 milliamps and I'd be surprised, milliamp hours, I should say, and I'd be surprised if it is that. Uh, this one is um, 2000 milliamp hours. So um, considerably different. So I'm gonna try and squeeze that one in there. Uh, may not be able to, but we'll see how we go. This is the old circuit board. So it has your inductor. That, this bit here is just a bit, 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 bit of plastic actually. That, that just uh, connects up uh, to here, which I've clipped off. Um, so it's not, not an actual component itself. Uh, and then you've got here uh, is your I think this is called a YX8050, so very similar to the sort of um, component that I use in the solar lamps, and then you just your switch. Uh, so, and your connector's coming through from your solar panel. So, uh, what I'll do now is I'll get rid of this, and we'll try and hook up the battery to here. Uh, here's what I'm going to replace it with. So here's where my ATINY13 will go, and uh, with the code on it to turn the LED on and uh, off. Uh, it's all these pins are broken out so that's what we we'll use to build up the circuit and then we've got the inductor I'm going to use a 470 micro Henry which is a little out of spec I think the data sheet goes up to 330 but that should squeeze the current right down 47 microfarad capacitor uh, then we've got our Schottky and our Zener here um, and that is in SMD format our QX5252 doing the hard work with a solar uh, panel connect our solar panel up to here, battery up to there, put the whole thing back and it'll be schmick. Let's uh, let's give that a try. All right, so another interlude. That's the pre-programmed ATINY13A going in. And that's SMD component, obviously. And then on the back here, we have got our um, 100 nanofarad capacitor, which goes across uh, VCC and ground and a 10k pull-up resistor for reset. Uh, and now I'm just adding the uh, the diodes, so the Schottky and the Zener diode, and there's the capacitor going in. So that's a 47 microfarad capacitor, and that looks like the inductor. And that looks pretty much good to go. So that is the circuit together, but is it the circuit working? Uh, I'm just going to put the battery in and see if we can get some flashing out of that. And that looks good. So that is two seconds off and an eighth of a second on. That's an ice blue 5mm LED with a... I think 100 ohm, yeah, 100 ohm resistor. So that should be plenty bright at night. All right, let's get it all packaged up. So that's the AA battery, which did eventually squeeze in there. Um, so, yep, that's fine. So more or less connected and ready to go. 
Uh, just a bit of hot gluing and putting it back together now. And uh, I've just covered it in hot glue as some sort of conformal coating, I guess, so that uh, it uh, can withstand the weather out there. So yeah, it's not night time, so you didn't get the, uh, the full effect really. But as you can see, it's pretty bright. And um, when it is night time, they, uh, they certainly do show up out there. Um, I don't know why it's any better than a steady light or a Christmas light or whatever, but I just like them. And uh, it's a pretty easy transformation from boring old uh, solar garden solar light through to flashing guy. I, I guess the problem might be if uh, aliens decide to land, having been um, you know signalled. But you know we'll deal with that when that happens. Uh, so that is the circuit working for this week, and we'll uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.